Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today I'm going to be deriving a uh, nice integral formula right there. Um, no Feynman integration today. Uh, it's not necessary for this. Um, but we'll be using these four facts right here. Uh, this is just the cosine half angle identity. It's fairly well known. I'll show this one here in a second. It just says that cosine of arctangent x is equal to 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. Uh, this is half the Gaussian integral, fairly well known, especially for people watching this channel. I will link to a video in which I show this result using Feynman integration. Um, and then also, uh, we'll be using Euler's formula. Okay, so really quick, I, I want to just show why this is true. So um, we know this, right? Um, we know that if we have uh, some angle, um, I'll use this notation right now. I'll call it tangent inverse of x instead of arc tangent since I don't have a lot of room to write there. If we have a, um, a, uh, a triangle with this angle, we know the tangent of it is going to be x because the tangent of tangent inverse of x is x. So the tangent of this, of this angle is x, represented by opposite over adjacent, x over 1. So the tangent of that is x. Okay, well, if this is 1 and this is x, that means this hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus 1. All right, so what is the cosine of our tangent x? Well, it's the cosine of this angle. That is 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. So that's why that's true. Alright, so let's get started with actually solving this. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is we want to use Euler's formula. Um, we want, uh, uh, let's take the, um, the real part of e to the i t x squared is going to be equal to the real part of cosine of tx squared plus i sine of tx squared. Um, so this is, the, the real part of this is simply cosine of tx squared. All right, so we're going to use this on our f of t. So f of t is equal to uh, the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x squared times the real part of e to the i t x. e to the i t x squared, sorry, dx. All right. Now this is just going to be cosine of something plus i sine of something, and if we take the real part of it, we can, we can bring the real part outside the integral, so I'll do that right now. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and combine, these have a common base of e, so we're just going to have negative x squared plus i t x squared plus i t x squared dx. Okay, um, let me make a little bit of room here, x squared, let's put a parentheses around that and factor out an x squared. Oh wait, no, we're just factoring out an x squared. So we still have minus x squared plus i t x squared. We factor out the x squared. We get minus 1 plus i t. Let's bring the negative sign out and make this 1 minus i t. All right, hopefully that's fairly legible. Let me clean that up a little bit. So yeah, this, this can be transformed into this. 
Um, I hope you followed the steps. Rewind the video if you didn't. Um, and now what we're going to do is we are going to let x squared times 1 minus i t to equal u squared. And the reason I did that, obviously, is so that this would become a negative u squared, and then hopefully we'll have some sort of constant multiple of the Gaussian integral. Um, well, this right here implies that x times 1 minus i t to the 1 half is equal to u. All right. All I did was take the square root on both sides. So let's bring this to the other side and just change the sign on the exponent. So this is going to become u times 1 minus i t to the negative 1 half. Take the derivative, we get dx is equal to this du. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, apply the substitution to this integral. All right, we still have the integral from 0 to infinity, um, the real part. This e to the negative x squared times 1 minus i t becomes e to the negative u squared, e to the negative u squared. And then our dx becomes du times 1 minus i t to the negative 1 half, which is constant with respect to u. So I bring it right outside the integral. Uh, we still have the real part. And then it is 1 minus i t to the negative 1 half. Okay, this part right here, that is the square root of pi over 2. It's one of the identities we're using. This is half the Gaussian integral. So this is uh, square root of pi over 2 times the real part of 1 minus i t to the negative 1 half. Okay. So let's put this, I'm going to copy this up here as one more addition onto this. I'm going to have to write a little bit small, but that's the square root of pi over 2 times the real part of 1 minus i t to the negative 1 half. And I'm going to go ahead and erase this, the rest of the board there. But this is all true. Okay. So now uh, let's just do this step by step. Let's find out what, in, what I or 1 minus i t is in polar form. Okay, let's go ahead and draw our complex plane here. All right, so this, this complex number 1 minus i t, this is going to be 1, and then it's going to be like right here, depending on the magnitude of t. So that's going to give us a triangle like that. The magnitude of this side is 1, and the magnitude of, well, this side is equal to uh, negative t. All right, so um, the polar representation for a complex uh, number represented like a plus ib, which this one is, it's 1 minus it, but it's the same form. Um, that is the, uh, the magnitude of the complex number, which is basically just its distance away from zero. And we can get that by using the Pythagorean theorem on the other two sides. So the magnitude of this complex number is going to be the square root of 1 plus minus t squared, or simply the square root of 1 plus t squared. So, we know that 1 minus i t is equal to, well, the magnitude, square root of 1 plus t squared, times e to the i phi, uh, or theta, whatever you want, where theta is this angle. Well, 
we don't really know that angle except to say that the tangent of that angle is definitely negative t. In other words, that angle is the arc tangent of negative t. And I'll write that as, no, I'll write an arc tangent. Arc tangent of negative t. Okay, well, arc tangent negative t is negative um, arc tangent t. That's a, that's a fairly well-known identity. So, 1 minus it is equal to the square root of 1 plus t squared times e to the negative i arctangent t. Okay. Well, um, so given that, let's go ahead and find out what 1 minus i t to the negative one half is going to be equal to. Um, well, it's going to be equal to this side to the negative one half. And you see, we, we actually want one minus i t to the negative one half. All right, so one minus i t to the negative one half is equal to this part to the negative one half. Well, that's going to give us one plus t squared to the negative one fourth, right? and then times this thing to the negative one half. So we're just going to have e to the negative times a negative is a positive, i arctangent of t over two. And I'll put that i outside the fraction. There we go. All right. Get rid of this, clean up the board a little bit. Okay. So we have, we have this, 1 minus i t to the negative 1 half is equal to this. So our f of t, actually, before we do that, let's find out, let's find out what this is. All right. E to the i um, times arc tangent of t over 2 is equal to uh, cosine of arc tangent t over 2 plus i sine of arctangent t over 2. That's from Euler's identity right here. Okay, so, well, we actually want, well, this part's always going to be real for real values of t. So, let's just say that the real part of this thing is just equal to this. Okay, great. So, all in all, what we're saying is that the real part of this is equal to the real part of this is equal to this, because that's always real, times the real part of this, which is just this. So let's just go ahead and put the real operator in front of everything. Real part of this equal to the real part of this is equal to this, because it's always real, for real values of t anyway. One plus t squared to the negative one fourth times the real part of this, which is simply cosine of arc tangent of t over 2. Okay. So, that's the real part of this. That is this 
So let's go ahead and replace the real part of this with uh, let's write it down below. Um, I'll keep this. So we have f of t now is equal to the square root of pi over 2 times the real part of this, which we determined to be this. So that's 1 plus t squared to the negative 1 fourth times cosine of arc tangent t over 2. All right, so we're getting closer. Um, now what we'll do is we'll use the cosine half angle identity on our, uh, cosine r tangent t over 2. So that's going to give us the following. f of t is equal to square root of pi over 2 times 1 plus t squared to the negative 1 fourth times, all right, well, cosine of x over 2, or theta over 2, or r tangent t over 2, is equal to the square root of 1 plus cosine x, or cosine theta, or cosine of r tangent t over 2. All right, so we have the square root of 1 plus um, cosine of arc tangent t and then all of that over 2. All right, cosine arctangent t over 2 is equal to the square root of 1 plus cosine arctangent t, and then all that divided by 2. Yep, okay. All right, and now we'll use um, cosine arctangent x um, is equal to 1 over x, uh, the square root of x squared plus 1. So, this whole thing becomes 1 over the square root of t squared plus 1. And I think, hmm, hmm, let's see. I don't know. Uh, I think we can probably do better than that. Uh, we can recognize that this is 1 over the square root of the square root of t squared plus 1. So we can bring this inside as a 1 over the square root of t squared plus 1. Oops. And then we'll get that uh, square root of pi over 2. All right, now we can multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction inside our radical by square root of t squared plus 1. So doing that to the bottom, we'll just get rid of this uh, square root sign. Applying it to this 1 over square root of t squared plus 1 will just give us 1 1. And then multiplying 1 times the square root of t squared plus 1 just gives us the square root of t squared plus 1. Okay. Um, we can bring this square root of pi over 2 inside our other square root as a pi over 4. And then we can bring this 2, we can multiply this 2 with this 8, giving us finally that the integral from 0 to infinity
of e to the negative x squared times cosine of t times x squared dx is equal to the square root of pi over 8 times the square root of t squared plus 1 plus 1 over t squared plus 1. And that's it, guys. Uh, nice little integral identity right there. So if you ever happen to <laughs> have to solve an integral like this, you can just plug it right into this formula, and that'll be the answer every time. All right, we'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed that.